Today is risk day. I'm going to try to lighten up what would otherwise be a really boring subject. Plus, 4x. Hi y'all, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuide.com and I'm in Texas and it is freaking a thousand degrees here and it's October. <laughs> Seriously, we're headed for a high of 97 today. Isn't that special? I'm going to briefly cover the subject of risk. What is it? Why should we control it? How should we control it? And if you guys want to hear about other things, you got to tell me what you want, what you really, really want, in the comments below. As awesome as I may be, I'm definitely no mind reader. I am a legend in my own mind, though, so there is that. Oh, and I made a huge mistake this week. It may have turned out okay. At least it could still turn out okay. But it will still go down in the annals of history as a bad trade. I just hate it when that happens. I'll talk about that, and the open trades, and the factoid, and the forex setup, and the burning questions of the universe, and I got my coffee, and here we go. And remember to click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our trading goodness. And I've got to share this image. I mean, wow, isn't Mount Fuji just incredible? <laughs> this is one of my favorite images ever. Okay, here's all that's been going on this week. Well, Apple gave us a higher high up here, then a pin bar. So I moved the stop up to 220 to lock in $3.30, and it looks like it has hit it. So I guess we're done with Apple for right now. This is kind of looking like a trading range right here, though, so I'll take a look at that later on. And Nike made this ominous bearish candle right here yesterday. So I moved the stop down to 91.85 to lock in a dollar four, and this morning it opened down here at 91.70. So we're out on the second half for 89 cents. This happens to us once in a while. Uh, the stop was here at 91.85, but the market jumped that level and opened at 91.70. So. That's where it's going to close us because it opened underneath the stop loss. So we're done with Nike for right now. So the second half of Bitcoin popped up and hit my trailing stop at 83.50 for a profit of 180.01 on the second half. So out of this trade for nice profit. However, I want to point out that there's a possible trading range happening right in here somewhere complete with descending volume and descending volatility so we'll probably make this trade official on Friday but keep your eyes on it because it could happen before then and these other cryptos they just kinda like following Bitcoin I think this has just been going sideways at least we hit target on Bitcoin uh, before it started going sideways so I close this thing right here this morning uh, for 456.87 for a profit of 779, and the reason I did that was because this consolidation is setting up right here. Let me clear this out a little bit. This consolidation is setting up right here, just like on Bitcoin, and any time it consolidates like this, it could break out in either direction. So since we had a tiny bit of profit, at least it wasn't negative. Uh, I went ahead and got out of this because the momentum that we were looking for to carry us to the target was gone because it started this sideways junk right here. So now I'm going to watch this for a break of this trading range because again like on Bitcoin we have descending volume, descending volatility that could make this another good breakout trade. Now here you go. I wear my shame on my sleeve right here. This is the dollar Swissy, and this was my royal screw up this week. Got in here when it popped just above the range on half size because the volume was only 79% right here. Then it closed yesterday back inside the range right here, and I totally missed this. I, I don't know how I missed it. 
I didn't notice it until this morning. So I stuck with it and it pushed way up, came kind of close-ish to our target, and now it looks like it's pulling back again. So if this closes back inside the range today, I will be out of it. But this is a great example of my mistake potentially turning out for good because this could still go on up and hit our target and I made this mistake and didn't get out here but it could just as easily have kept going and hit the stop loss as well which it could still do so let's pretend for the moment that it does pop up and hit our target up here this will still go down in my log as a bad trade not because it was a loser but because I violated my rules and it could have gone badly I'll be talking a little bit more about risk shortly but this is an example of why I would get out of a trade early when a close is back inside the range. And the reason is because I want to keep it from going all the way down here and hitting the stop loss. And here's gold, and it is just a whole big bag of ah right now. If my strategy of breakouts from consolidation works anywhere, it's usually spot on where gold is concerned. However, it looks like we may be getting a close back in the range. It may even hit our stop before the day is out. We'll just keep a, an eye on this thing. It's going to be a few hours till you guys see this video, so it may have already hit the stop by then. If not, be sure to watch it at the end of the day for a close. And that's all the open trades for today. Now, here's the factoid of the day. Dogs. <laughs> I talked about dogs the other day, didn't I? I don't know too many people that don't love dogs. Sure, there are some particularly those who may be allergic to them, but most people can appreciate the love of a good dog. As I probably mentioned the other day, I'm a German Shepherd guy. A few years back, I used to work with a Shepherd breeder in North Carolina, helping to train canines, home protection dogs, and search dogs. I, in fact, had a Shepherd extensively trained as an air sending search dog, and he and I spent many a day in the North Carolina mountains together hiking and searching and so on. And when I say a few years back, I mean almost 40 of them. <laughs> At that time, a good German Shepherd with a good German bloodline cost maybe $500. <laughs> Not so much anymore. A South Carolina-based company by the name of Harrison K9 trains and sells security dogs for all of your protection needs. <laughs> wow, it's starting to sound like a sales pitch, isn't it? Maybe I should call them and get them to sponsor my channel. <laughs> Seriously, complete transparency here. I have absolutely no connection with Harrison or any protection dog company whatsoever, including the breeder I used to work with. In fact, I haven't talked to them since I moved away in 1982. Anyway, Harrison selects elite European German Shepherd puppies from Germany, which even 40 years ago were the best, and trains them in obedience, protection, scent tracking, and attack. Here's the kicker. These guys sell for anywhere from $50,000 to $230,000. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. That's a far cry from the $500 we paid back in the day. Of course, these $50,000 dogs are completely trained, so there is that. From what I see at Harrison's website, the untrained puppies are more in the $4,000-ish range. So that's a bit more reasonable, I guess. But you can't put a price on love and protection, right? Hat tip to the hustle for this news nugget. I'll include all the links below. And on that note, let's take a look at the US dollar Japanese yen. Wait, did I mention our Forex analysis was on the dollar yen? I know, I may not say it in the title, but you can usually surmise my topic from my thumbnail images. Mount Fuji, of course, is in Japan. And you can see US dollars right in here and Japanese yen right in here. So, got to pay attention to the pictures, right? Well, here's a great bear flag on the USD yen. A bear flag got to start off with some bear, and that's the bear right there in the form of a downtrend. Then the flag is this nice upward slanting parallel price channel right there. We anticipate this pattern to break to the downside, which it looks like it's starting to do already. And I will only take a short on a break below this pattern. Also, I like to look down here for a drop in the volume and a drop in the volatility. And of course, the volatility is measured by the average true range, or ATR, which is simply an average of the length of the last 14 candles. 
I scoped this out yesterday, but it looks like today we might actually get a trigger on this. So watch it today on the close at 5 p.m. New York time. So here's the trade plan. We're going to sell a daily close below the bear flag. On the breaking candle, I want to see the volume bar reach up to the volume average right here to enter a full size position. If it doesn't reach the average but does at least reach 75% of the average, I will open a half size position to reduce risk. You can calculate the percentage by taking this volume number right here, dividing it by the volume average here, and you should get at least 0.75. If you don't get at least 0.75, don't enter the trade. Just watch it go by. Your stop loss will be one and a half times the ATR, and your first target will be one times the ATR. So on the breaking candle, you will look over here to find the ATR. You will multiply that by one and a half, and you will put that above your entry. So if this were to close right here, and your entry was here, you would measure that one and a half ATRs to here. Your target then would be one ATR below the entry. Remember, you measure your stop loss and your target from the entry, not the bottom of the bear flag. If after entering the trade, you get a close back inside the consolidation, take your loss right there and don't wait for it to hit the full stop loss. Our intention is that a breakout from these patterns should be explosive and hit our target fairly quickly. If the momentum goes away, we want to shut the trade down without taking a full stop if possible. When the price hits our first target, we will close one half the position for profit and set the stop loss to break even on the remainder. We will then follow stops as price moves in our direction until the market takes us out. Now typically I do this with two positions. The first one has a hard stop loss and a hard take profit at the appropriate prices. The second position will have a hard stop loss and no take profit associated with it. I only risk 2% of my account on each trade. No single trade should make or break you. And that is the dollar yen setup for today. All right, it's time to talk about risk. And I'm not talking about the board game now. <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with the dictionary definition of risk. You can see it right here. I'm only going to talk about meaning number four, the chance that an investment such as a stock or commodity will lose value. No one knows what the market is going to do tomorrow, or two hours from now, or even two minutes from now. But wow, imagine if we did. I like to watch short sci-fi videos on the YouTubes. One video I watched recently, which I'll link below in case you're interested, was about a guy who bought a recliner at a yard sale. When he got it home, he figured out that every time he reclined the chair, it took him back one minute in time. He quickly figured out then how to make a fortune on the horses by knowing who's about to win. I won't spoil it with the ending, but suffice to say it was very Twilight Zone-ish. Anyway, how much could we make if we could know exactly what's going to happen one minute from now? But I digress. Short of a time-traveling lazy boy, or DeLorean for that matter, it ain't going to happen. So, how do we deal with the risk of entering trades without knowing for sure what's going to happen? Well, I know when I started my trading journey in 2004, I thought my mentors were magical and knew what the market was going to do, and all I had to do was figure out how they knew that. It took me a few years to understand, that just ain't so. Guys, I'm no guru who knows exactly what the market is going to do. What I am is a guy who has learned how to recognize high probability setups, Notice I said high probability. It's not a sure thing. And I manage my risk so if the setup goes the wrong way, I get out of it early to minimize the loss. And when it goes the right way, I manage the trade to maximize the profit. Remember, trading is not about sure things. It's about probabilities. Yeah, that sounds a bit like gambling, doesn't it? Well, maybe it is. I used to get offended by someone telling me that what I did was gambling, but let's face it, are they wrong? I mean, there are successful gamblers that make a bunch of money. How do they do that? By taking only high probability gambles and then managing their risk. And that's what makes us successful too. So, what if you were to buy a Powerball ticket today? Or whatever day they play Powerball. Or some other big lottery. 
Is that a high probability setup? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> it's an even lower probability setup if you wait until the payoff is $400 million. That reduces the probability way more than when it's just a $50 million payoff. So why do people pile on when the payoff climbs? Who knows? If I were someone who did that, I would buy it every single time. I mean, it's only a buck or something, right? And a $1 million win would still be huge. Sorry, that was a bit of a rant. I never understood why someone thought that buying a ticket when the Powerball is huge was better than when it was less huge. Because it's always huge relative to the buck you're spending for your ticket, right? But I digress. The point is, that's a low probability setup for a gambler. You would be much better off betting on a poker game or something else and having a strategy to win or cut your losses, particularly if you gambled on something that you had a little bit better control of. Anyway, that's what my rule set is all about. That's why I have the rule that I shut down the trade when it closes back in the pattern. The expectation is that the price will explode from the pattern and go quickly to the target. But if that momentum fizzles, then I want to be out of it. The easiest way to identify the dissipation of the momentum is a close back inside the consolidation. Another way to do that is to see that the price is forming a new consolidation, like we saw with Ethereum Classic today. So the high probability setup is the price is in a consolidation, traders are getting bored, probably watching cat videos or something. I mean, that's probably what I would be doing, right? then suddenly something happens, driving price out of the consolidation, and all those board traders are now spitting out their Cheerios and grabbing the mouse and jumping on these trades. That's what creates the momentum, and that's our high probability setup, especially if we see a lot of volume coming out of that consolidation. And if we don't have that momentum and that volume, then we don't have a high probability trade, and that's the reason why I reduce my risk if we only have 75% of the average volume. So, how do we manage risk after we've identified a high probability setup? We limit the amount of money we can lose on it. Once I've identified the point at which I will shut the trade down, in my case one and a half times the ATR, I then calculate the numbers so a full stop loss will only cost me 2% of my account. At that rate, I can take a huge number of consecutive losses and still continue to trade. Protecting your trading account is your first job because how do you trade without a trading account? Okay, I'm going to cut this short because I can rant on about risk management for hours and ain't nobody got time for that. Here are the rules I use to manage my risk. And remember, no trade is 100% sure, so you never, never want to go all in, as they say. Rule number one, no more than 2% account risk on any trade. Keep in mind, this is what I do. If you want to use 3% or 1% or a quarter of a percent, that's up to you. Just stick with the plan. If you always use a percentage risk, then the risk will always adjust for your current account size. Plus, it will always adjust for the per pip or per tick risk on the market you're trading. Rule number two, stop loss of 1.5 times the ATR. If you use the average true range for your stop losses and targets, they will automatically adjust for whatever market you're trading. If you automatically use a 25 pip stop loss, it's going to go a long time on the euro pound, but that ain't going to last very long on the pound yen or the pound New Zealand. So using the average true range for whatever time frame that you want to trade will automatically adjust your stop loss for the market. Rule number three, close trade if price closes back inside the consolidation. If you're trading breakouts from consolidations like I do, this is a great way to know that momentum is gone from this trade. Also, if price creates a new consolidation, that's another way to know that the momentum is gone. Trading trainers are always saying, cut your losses and let your winners run. Then they don't bother explaining how to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's like the magical answer. This is part of cutting off your losses. Once the whole point of your strategy is done, get out of the trade. In my case, that translates into once the momentum is out of the movement, cut it off at the knees. 
And there you go, risk management in just as concise a treatise as I could possibly provide. So let's talk about another thing that I use that helps me stay in line, the trading maxims. A maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, rule of conduct, or a proverbial saying. I get these maxims from anywhere and everywhere, and i actually written a few of them myself. The purpose of my maxims is to motivate me to discipline. Motivation is a good start, but discipline is what keeps you going through the tough times. It's what drives you to the goal. I suggest you start your own list of maxims to help in your trading. Feel free to borrow from my list. And here we go to the archives today. This is a fun one. Tim's trading maxim number 17. Stupid is the worst trading strategy. <laughs> Casey Stubbs said this to me one day. I was training my young niece how to trade, and she had made notes on what I taught her. She was a pretty good student. Every other line she put in the list, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> I shared that story with Casey, and this is what he told me. Stupid is the worst trading strategy. It's fun, of course, but what I'm trying to do is define what constitutes stupid. I did a stupid thing this week with that U.S. dollar Swissy thing. I didn't properly manage my risk by shutting that trade down. It may or may not work out positively in the end, but it could just as easily have gone straight to the stop loss today. And like I say, it still could. So our working definition of stupid is not following your rules. That is stupid. Remember our US dollar Japanese yen trade plan. We're going to sell on a daily candle close below the bear flag. If the volume is not quite average, go half size as long as it's at least 75% of the average. Your stop loss is one and a half times the ATR, and your first target is one times the ATR. And remember to check out the trade management video for more details. The link will be below. And go sign up for my free trading picks email list to be sure you don't miss any of these picks. I'll be sending out three or four trading picks a week, everything from stocks to futures to cryptos to Forex, and you'll get to see them first. Plus, you'll get first notifications of anything special that's happening, and the best thing is, it's free. I'll put the link below the video. And be sure to come back to Trading Strategy Guide's YouTube channel every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for awesome pictures of Mount Fuji and for the rest of my videos. We'll have a nice trade set up or two on each one and maybe some extra Q&A or training on Wednesdays, like today. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. I try to answer questions as quickly as possible. Sometimes I'm kind of slack about that, but I will get to you. I promise. And remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. And I appreciate all the input you guys are giving me. Continue to let me know what things are bugging you about your trading or about my trading. I will explain anything I possibly can explain. Just let me know what you're thinking. I'm not like a mind reader, you know? Also, you can follow me on Twitter. I'll put my Twitter link below. Tell your friends about us and help us make this the best trading channel on the internet. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up below. Have a great remainder of your week, and I'll see you next time.